Hello to the good people of St. Mark's. This is the fifth installation of the Canterbury Tales, our uh, online video log of our trip. Here I am, um, I've let all of the students go actually. Uh, they're getting ready uh, to have dinner with the Dean and some members of the chapter and so on tonight and our uh, our last Evensong here in Canterbury before we go back to London. But I'm actually here with the man himself, uh, Dean Robert Willis, the Dean of Canterbury. Hello. Um, a man of uh, great holiness and thoughtfulness whom I've admired uh, ever since I met him five years ago when I was on pilgrimage here. Um, so we were, uh, as you all saw in our pictures, we were so lucky uh, to to be uh, the, the guest of Dean Robert uh, on the first day that we were here. Indeed. We had an impromptu birthday party just over there. A surprise um, for, J for Justin. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it was fantastic. Uh, I only turned 30 once and this was the way to do it for me. Um, <laughs> In any case, uh, Dean Robert was so nice to uh, to just sit down with us here for a moment and to, to have a word with you, the people of St. Mark's. Um, I've just got three questions for you, of Dean. Of course, yeah. Um, the, the first is, um, I wonder if you might say a, a word for the people at home about the mission statement of the cathedral, to show people Jesus. Yes, of course. Um, when I came here, there was a, a quite a long mission statement, which, which tended to, to concentrate a bit too much on heritage and history. Hmm. And we thought and prayed long and hard about it until one morning we were at the communion and the gospel from St. John was being read of the Greek, shall we call them tourists, in the temple courtyard who are a bit shy to go near to, to Jesus himself and so they go to the uh, disciple Philip hmm. and say, Sir, we would like to see Jesus. And we read that Philip tells Andrew and Andrew and Philip tell Jesus and it's at that moment that Jesus says the hour has come as if to say for my ministry and 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 mission to be for the whole world not just mm. for here so we thought well this is this is a really good mission statement for all our people we're, we're well over 300 almost 400 full-time paid staff and hundreds of volunteers mm. and that the words to show people Jesus mean that a stonemason carving lovely things or a security officer um, keeping people safe uh, or a welcomer or someone serving food to the pilgrims who are here is showing people Jesus just as well as us at the altar or choristers singing the Magnificat. Mm. That's incredibly beautiful. Uh, I have to say that has been our experience here. So um, last night, uh, as the folks at home know, we've been meeting every night to, uh, to say Compline together and, uh, and to chat about the day. Yes. And I just, I just asked the I just asked the kids how yes. have you seen Jesus yes uh, given that this is the cathedral's mission how have they how have they done and yes. uh, they they said the most beautiful and extraordinary things um, and I hope that the uh, hopefully uh, <laughs> the Dean will hear some of them from them uh, tonight and um, for those of you at home ask the pilgrims when they come back ask them how they saw Jesus here and uh, you'll be moved by it we're intending to have a little question time, I think, after supper, aren't we, before we go into the cathedral. Absolutely. And I've said to them, um, store up your questions so that we can answer any questions that come. Totally. Yeah. Um, you know, I think one of the things that the, the kids did speak to last night um, was the incredible welcome that they received, as they said, not only from you at the very yeah. beginning, but from, from the entire staff. Uh, you guys should ask Jack Harrison about the bottle of apple juice that he was given by the <laughs> by the catering staff after coffee hour. He was so obsessed with how delicious this apple juice was, and they actually they, they gave it to the to the uh, presumptuous American teenager who was like, "Can I have that?" And they were like, "Yes, of course." Um, in any case, I wondered if um, my hunch is that. Yeah. The welcome and the hospitality of the cathedral is rooted in its Benedictine heritage and uh, I wondered if you think about it in the same way. It's funny, we, we had a, a full day chapter yesterday because we're coming to the end of a huge restoration program. So my one item agenda was the way forward when mm. this is all over. And someone had put down the, the two things that I always stress. That is, um, and it, it came in a letter when I first became a dean um, in 1992 as dean of Hereford. Somebody said, you only have two jobs, that is to proclaim the gospel and to give good hospitality. Oh, wow. And they actually, and, and I, I take that at the altar and in our houses and throughout the precincts, but um, they, they actually were being um, more truthful than they knew. But yesterday, mm. someone had put to give good Benedictine hospitality. Mm. And I said, yes, that's the historic thing, but I think that is too technical. Mm. for so, so good hospitality is something that everybody understands. It's a smile, it's a sort of, can I show you what we're doing if you're interested, that kind of thing. Mm. And so 
that to me is the, the, the crucial thing. But of course, it's, it's, this was a Benedictine monastery for almost a thousand years until the Reformation, and, and, and those, those uh, habits are still mm. very much part of us. So it's rooted in that, yep. that it's about giving good hospitality. That's extraordinary. Uh, those of you who have never been to Canterbury, uh, you should. <laughs> Not only because uh, it is such a holy place, but because um, the only comparison that the kids could come up with really to what their experience has been like here is Disney World. And the people at Disney World are welcoming, but you're paying them to be welcoming. <laughs> and uh, uh, the people of Canterbury are welcoming because they're trying to show people Jesus. Really extraordinary. Um, and on that last note, actually, an invitation for everybody to come and, and see yes, you. Yes, indeed. Absolutely. Um, I wonder if you if you might say a word about what Canterbury means to um, means to the Anglican Communion and to Anglicans and Episcopalians like like the people of our parish, of course. Um, who may have never been here, but who uh, for whom you all have prayed. I mean, I was very moved yesterday and during yeah. uh, during Mass. Yeah. Um, uh, Dean Robert Wiley was celebrating, um, lifted up, uh, lifted up Bishop Ian, our bishop in Connecticut, and his people. That that is us during the intercessions. Um, anyway. Um, Yes, uh, well, as you know, St. Augustine came here uh, in 597, uh, well over 1400 years ago, in order to bring the gospel to the English-speaking people, Angles, they were called. And so the root of everyone who speaks English in all Christian denominations is, is, is actually here in Canterbury. Mm. And we feel ourselves as Anglican Episcopalians, stewards of this mother church of all those. Mm. And so we welcome both pilgrims and tourists, not just Episcopalians, and, and certainly not always just Christians, people who mm. are searchers all the time. But to us Anglicans, Episcopalians, it becomes our mother. And mm. here when we have uh, uh, seminarians coming from across the world, bishops coming from across the world, the family can have squabbles, all families do. But Archbishop Rowan Williams used to call this place Mother's Kitchen, where the family can sort its troubles out, but nobody can say she's not your mother, she's mine, because Canterbury belongs to us all, and there is that great feeling when we're together. And I think that gives hope to a world that needs barriers breaking down at the moment, and, mm. and much more unity than division. I'm into that. It feels like we're back in Mama's Kitchen. It does it the moment I walk on the precincts, and I think that the kids have been so blessed to um, to experience that um, these last few days. Dean, thank you so much. Um, on behalf of the people of St. Mark's, thank you for your ministry. It's been the greatest pleasure to have your people here. I've, I've really enjoyed uh, having them as our guests. I've been very impressed that not one of them has missed early matins, morning prayer, at any morning. <laughs> <laughs> oh my gosh, that's, really, that's quite something. You know these kids. I'm just kidding. Um, thank you so much. Wonderful. We'll Good. see you tomorrow from London. Bye-bye.